we will go ahead and we will get the shirt on the road. So we're going to talk about flex registration today. So if you guys have registrations where you need a registration by a specific program date, or you want to do discounts related to how many classes somebody has signed up for, well, you're in luck. That's what we're going to go ahead and talk about today, along with, for the first time, what does it look like on the community side? So your team for today is myself, your spring guide and friendly neighborhood moderator. I will be handling all the questions in the chat. And Jen is our resident butterfly wrangler today. So she will be teaching us all we need to know about flex registration. If you have any questions there that don't have anything to do with flex registration, that's perfectly fine. Please go ahead and send them to our fantastic support team at support at recdesk.com or at the phone number you see on your screen. I will also go ahead and post this in the chat as well for future use. And with that being said, I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Jen to take us on this exciting journey. Are we ready, Jen? I am. Thank you very much, Andrew. So in this training, we're going to go a little bit deeper, and we have some examples of earlier programs that I've made using Flex registration, um, but I am going to make one from scratch because so everybody has different options, and this was one I have been super excited to make. Now, we have some groups that are going to use us for things like daycare, where people pick every day. Now, we also have some groups that do things like escape rooms or um, interactive type of experiences. Previously, with they were using facilities in order to be able to rent that space out during that time period, but that meant it was only one household that could use that time slot. Now they're going to be able to use this flex registration piece. So if we make this for escape room use, for the escape room, I can put this under my general program type. Now drop in support. You do want to either if you do want to use our check in feature, meaning you want people to be checked in through rec desk when they get there and know they preemptively signed up for the escape room. You do want to change or for any program that of that matter, flex registration programs must be yes pre registration required. The yes with no pre registration required are for drop in programs. They cannot be flex registration programs. Those are still more like your daily yoga programs where someone's just paying five bucks at the door. Make sure you have your options selected for where you want this information to show as well as an enrollment period if there is one. Any descriptions that you'd like to show on the community site about the program, you can enter here. Any notes that you need them to have and receive at the end of registration. Put that information here in the notes and check off the box to include notes on receipt. Make sure you choose your general ledger code if you use them. If you do use sales tax, I unfortunately don't have an example, but you would just apply the sales tax to the program through that dropdown. And then we wanna get set up with our demographics. So for something like an escape room, if I can have up to eight people do an experience at a time, then I want to set my enrollment maximum to eight because this is going to make it so pull that information later when I do those flex registration dates as an enrollment maximum of eight per day. If there is a age restriction to this as well, maybe they need to be a minimum of 18 to register. Don't forget to not only type the date, but the date they need to be 18 by. We do look for that in fourth date. Now, if there's any custom questions that you wanted to add to this program, please feel free to as well. Now, I'm going to set a reoccurring schedule here and simply because of how I'm going to, to set this up. So if I say that this is going to run every day, or every fr every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I'm going to start the escape room at 3 p.m. And let's just say they get one hour to go all the way through it. If I'm going to start it in April, I can say start it in April. Now, end by 
is more of a preference uh, for me than occurrences, because if I wanted to set up an entire year at once. I can't believe I'm typing 2024 already. And then I just choose the location. So in this case, I'm going to choose my escape room. Now I can repeat this if I have different times by setting reoccurring schedule and checking off this box for append to existing schedule. Um, that way I can do my next time slot of my four to five. Oops, I forgot to add the room, but that's okay. This is just an example, sorry about that. And then I'm just gonna save this so it'll combine those two time slots. So you see how everything is listed here. Now fees. Mine's going to be a fee per person. So if it's an $8 fee per participant, then I wanna put my fee type in as individual eight and checking off this box. Now this is when they're paying per date. I will show the camp example afterwards that shows a progressive fee structure. Now you can add add-on fees as well. Uh, I'm not quite sure of a good example with something like an escape room, but for something like daycare, if there was an extra fee to always have a uh, late pickup, then you can have that here and have that additional fee be added for every date they select. Um, or if there's a one-time universal fee to sign up for daycare. If it's a $25 type of deposit in order for them to get access to a certain area, um, t-shirts, things like that, where it's a one-time fee for registration, add that add-on fee name and type in the value and hit save. And the last step, we're gonna go to the flex tab and we're going to configure as a flex registration program. Ooh, sorry about that. My computer got a little jammed there. So I can choose the maximum number of days that they can pick. So I want one or, I'm sorry, the minimum of one and maximum. Obviously, this particular one has quite a large number of time slots to it. So we're just going to make a joke and say you can't do more than 12. Now labels. I don't think I know how to spell that right, but let's just say you have a certain day that there's a special event. So April Fool's Day happens to be April 1st. So I'll make that joke here that those particular dates are extra special because they're the April Fool's Day bonanza. So maybe on those days, I can have more people because it's a larger event. You can manually increase or decrease that specific date. Now you do want to scroll down. There are a lot of labels. I did make a very big schedule. So as you can see, it is not encouraged to create that many time slots unless it's really necessary. And then the fee, the base fee scheme right here is per time slot. I want them to pay per visit. Progressive is the other one, and we'll go over that when it comes to summer camps. And add-on fees, if they're applicable, you can either charge them once, meaning once per registration or per time slot. And then you hit save. Now, before I show what this looks like on the community end, do we have any questions? Yes, Jen. We have a question on if flex registration can be used with check-in or drop-in programs. So I call it check-in programs um, is what it can be used for. We have two options when you're setting a program up, whether it's going to be yes, pre-registration is required or yes, no pre-registration is required. I call this yes with pre-registration required the check-in feature only. You're just looking to be able to say that somebody who preemptively paid is here and they need to prepay to be able to attend. Yes, with no pre-registration, I call that one the drop-in option. That's for people who are dropping into something like a fitness class or maybe you have like an art special where, um, you know, if they're going to use the kilns, 
they just pay every time they stop in to go use the kilns. That type of a, of a situation where you're more just keeping count. Now, as a reminder, I did forget flex forms can also be applied to these types of programs. So flex forms are something that you will create separate to this. We are not going to go over them in this training, but whatever form you need associated with the program with flex registration forms still work. You do want to make sure you choose new form each time or shared. Remember, with shared documents, after they fill them out for the first time, the next time they go to complete that document, if that document is still marked as shared, their previous responses are going to pull in. Now you do have an allow partial checkbox. I don't really recommend that because that does allow them to skip over required fields, but you may have some instances where that's necessary. And we do have an option to make a form internal use only. Something like that is very useful if you have lifeguard staff that needs to be able to evaluate swimmers or something along those lines when it comes to like your facility reservations and you need to show proof of insurance was received uh, after a registration, somebody made a, I'm sorry, somebody makes a reservation online. Now I wanna show you what it looks like on the community end to go ahead and sign up. Now, hang on one moment while I just get myself logged in. And while Jen is doing that, as a reminder, if you guys have any questions, please go ahead and post them in the chat. And thank you for those questions we have received already. Okay, now that I'm logged in, I can go to my programs tab. And right here under my general category is my escape room. I can hit the register now button. Choose which person in my household I'm going to sign up. Now you can see right here, if there's a label to it, they're going to be able to read that information. And they can go ahead and select whatever dates are applicable to their needs. As you can see, this is part of the reason I don't recommend doing more than 100 time slots. I got a little over ambitious there. Um, and then they'll just choose their fee type. This, the reason this still appears, just to be clear, is some cases we do have a lot of resident and non-resident fees. So this is still going to make it so that they're required to look for that information. And then they will go to checkout. They'll have to click I accept to your online checkout wa waiver. If there's any forms for them to complete, they'll be able to complete that form during checkout. And then you'll be able to say, I have completed all forms. And then there's the last screen where they're just going to have to make their payment. Terribly sorry, everyone, using a demo card. Sometimes I've reused too many ones. There we go. And as I can see here from my end, I have completed my registration. Now, a cool thing, if I go to my account for my community and not only was that registration process really, really simple, but if I go to my household calendar, I'm only going to see the dates on the calendar that somebody has selected for that program. Not all the dates that that program runs, just the dates that I chose. So you can see some examples here of when I chose the escape room and when I chose some of the other programs that I have made uh, previously. And that also does go down to an individual household members level as well, where if they're just looking for one person, it'll show just that one person's registration dates. Now, if I go to my roster tab, now, due to that registration, I'm going to see that member right here. Now, cool thing is my roster is going to show everyone who signs up because we added this filter so that you can choose the dates that somebody selected or did not and find out who signed up what day. And this allows you to filter through 
so that your roster is accurate based on who actually signed up because this export piece will go based on who's filtered. Now, not necessarily escape rooms, but if you're using the same intent for your daycare type of situations, please think about using our instructor um, piece of the system that allows somebody who's just the daycare instructor access to their roster and they can take attendance. It works the same for your summer camp people or anybody else. They can take attendance on their program that's different than this piece. It's a little bit more mobile friendly. And their attendance is going to filter to just show the names of the people who have registered for that day's event. Now, they do have access to update their rosters until midnight of that day. So just keep that in mind that if someone does not have the ability to uh, update their roster on the day the event takes place that sometimes it just needs to they can go ahead and do that but it'll just need to be taken care of um, a little bit later now before i show the alternate type of programs that we've made some examples before where we've made some some camp registrations as well as a tournament weekend is there any other questions Actually, Jen, we have a question that you may be getting to anyhow, but I have a question asking, would flex registration be good for pickleball signups for Saturday morning? Is that one of your alternative examples by chance? Absolutely. Now, I did not make a perfect example with this tournament weekend example. However, pickleball and tennis, this is a prime example. Now, I've already done a bunch of this build, so I'm just going to focus on the flex tab here. The idea behind this example is when you have open pickleball, you just put your dates and the time periods on your schedule that they can choose pickleball for that weekend. Go ahead and post it because then that lets them pick the enrollment maximum. So the maximum number of people who can play at your course, you can set that up. Now, this tournament example was using that same idea where those courts are being used, but each day and time have two different types of um, available tournaments open. So if you want to do doubles, singles, women's matched, mixed partners, I ran out of naming options at that point. So we went to the doubles and singles again. But this type of label feature with your pickleball is also going to help guide registrations. Is if it's because if it's just daily, set it up the way we just did the um, the previous program where they're paying per time slot. If it's more of a tournament style where there's some activity going on and they can sign up for a certain type of activity within that day, then set it up like this, where the label is more where they're going to register. That way that label has that maximum associated with it. And keep in mind that these schedules are ones that you create. So if this get the, the day, day's events really go much longer, variable amount of uh, playtime, then just make sure you build your schedule accordingly. Do we have any other sports questions before we move on to camp? Yes. So Jen, would this be a good option for setting up various tournaments with multiple divisions? Absolutely. Same setup, same idea. May, the only thing that I will point out when it comes to setting up tournaments with divisions is if you are dealing with age restricted divisions, you are going to have to play a little bit by uh, the label being hoping that the, the, the person is signing up accurately um, because the program level will do age restrictions. It's not per date. So if you're dealing with like 8U, 10U and 12U, you can put the labels in but the system isn't going to know that somebody who is truly an 8U accidentally signed up for the 12U time slot. So it is good for, for those programs, but if it's coaches registering, I would add some extra questions in just in case they make some normal human mistakes. Great, thank you, Jen.
All right. And then summer camps. Summer camps was a really big one. There's a little bit of an alternate workflow when it comes to summer camps. And what that has to do with is the way that you're setting up the schedule so that the flex registration piece will work out correctly. We do need the schedule to be the first day of the week they're signing up for for camp because they're signing up for weeks of camp. They're not signing up for a single day of camp. So you want to make sure you're only building this based off of the first day of the week that your camp will be running. Don't worry. We do recommend us adding the additional days that camp runs as a reservation, just so that you block the days and times off on your calendar and don't accidentally double, uh, double schedule something. This type of build, though, allows you to build what's called a progressive fee structure. So you can see in here, I kind of created some names just to encourage the weeks that they're signing up for. So progressive pops out like this. Now this time slot is actually a count of. So one time slot, if they choose one week of camp, I have it set so they're gonna pay $150. If they're gonna do two weeks of camp, it's 290. Now this is not to say that they're choosing time slot one or time slot two. I could pick time slot four and five and still pay the 290 because it's going off of the quantity that I select. So you get to build that discounted rate in based on the more time that they choose to do for weeks for camp. And again, this is very simple to use. Um, and it also does work with our pre-registration feature. So people who have multiple children and they're doing things like some, signing up for summer camps, they can always do this plus button on the community site. And this gives you a pre-cart so that you can preemptively put all the household members that are applicable. Into the program. And this way they can quickly go through and pick and choose those days and save. And you'll see that it'll put the items into the shopping cart. And this just lets them go a little bit faster when there are multiples in the household. Do we have any other questions? Yes, we do have one other question, Jen. Can we break it down and do a daily selection instead of a week at a time? For camp, for summer camp? Yes. Do you, absolutely, if you're charging them on a daily rate. The thing is, is it's really based on like how you plan on billing them. Is the fee, if they're picking one day of week one, do they have to pay for all of week one or is it a different cost? Those are the things that you just need to take into consideration. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. And that was the only question we have at this moment. All right. Well, we'll go over a few other things just as some fun reminders. All of your flex registration programs do allow that bulk copy feature to work as well. So if you're running the same programs from one year to the next, you can always select up to 10 so that you can do the action and copy them in bulk. Remember, 364 days puts you on the same day of the week. So Saturday to Saturday, um, 365 keeps the exact date going. You see, this gave me my Saturday, Saturday, Monday, Monday, and kept that going. And this will copy over the fees that you've already created and the entirety that of the schedule. It just gets rid of and updates it to the current or to your next year, and it'll put it in draft mode. So this way, if you have changes because, hey, we increased prices, you can come in here and you can edit it before you even make it visible to the public by publishing. 
this program. All right, and do we have any other questions before I start winding down and showing where all of our support information is located? Yes, Jen, we do have a question on invoices. Does the invoice show what weeks or days that they signed up for? Yes, it absolutely does. In fact, I'll click on that invoice for the escape room that I signed up for. If I go to my roster, Pretty much anything that's blue and has this underline is a clickable link. So you can go ahead and shortcut to whatever you need by just clicking on it. But you'll see right here on the invoice, it has all the dates that they selected. Now it's for flex registration, it's going to be all of those dates, just to be clear. Um, if it's something where it's regular program, it's just going to do like the first day of the program and say dash to the last day of the program. And just so you know, the same information also shows up when you print this information as well. And it opens up when they look at their invoice on the community end. So it kind of shows in a whole bunch of different places. And it shows on the email they receive as well as if they go to print out the receipt. Now, oh, please. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say perfect. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. And also keep in mind that if you have any questions, we have tried to make as give you guys as many resources as we possibly can. We have our support center, this big orange button right here at the top. And when you open up the support center, this is a great area. We do categorize everything if you want to filter through. But if you have a certain question, so let's just say you're looking at information about Flex registration. If I start typing in Flex RE, see how I have an article pop up? Try keeping it to one word when you go searching because we've did a, done a lot of keywords to try to help you guys get to these articles quicker. And in these articles, we have those written tutorials as well as sometimes you'll see some GIFs or some images to help guide you along the way. Now, if you're a more visual learner, please keep in mind that all the way at the bottom of our support center, at any point, you can scroll down and click on the play button for our YouTube channel. As Andrew did bring up earlier, we also have our Instagram and our Facebook play page. We do recommend following us if you don't, especially because we like to post some helpful tips and tricks along the way there. Um, but our YouTube channel is fully stocked with a whole bunch of training videos. You also have this great resource center. Now this resource center kind of has a little bit more broken down videos. We broke it down to training for your front desk users. So these aren't your people who are building. These are just the people helping your community members go into the programs, the memberships, help do reservations and things along those lines. We did add videos training as well for builders. So the people who are gonna build in your system, they're gonna add the facilities, they're going to add in your programs and help building. This is a whole training center built just for that. We also have some videos with some great helpful workflows in here. If you ever have any recommendations or anything you'd like to see, let us know. We love adding more in there. And we do link our latest power up videos here as well. Uh, you can also shortcut here to get to the latest release notes or if you want to get the support center instead of leaving here and clicking the orange button you can just click right down here as well otherwise if you have any questions please give us a call or shoot us an email at support at recdesk.com so we can assist you in any way we can and i'll leave the floor open now so if there's any more questions that come in we can wait for it um, but otherwise, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Jen. As Jen mentioned, we will be here for a few more minutes.
So if you guys have any questions, feel free to stick around and post them in the chat. And if not, we thank you for joining us today and hope you have a great rest of your week.